man what's up everybody it is bq checking in for the impact lounge here i've been talking about for a little while that i wanted to do a hardcore justice review because people have been asking for it asking for my thoughts on the show i know it's a week later i apologize i'm getting around around to it finally i'm gonna do a quick rundown overall of what i thought of the show i think this one was a miss uh The three Impact Plus shows we've had so far this year have been excellent. They used to be really bad, and they've progressively gotten better. And now they've been pretty good. They're they're pay-per-view level shows a lot of the time. You know, I've also said they go a little too hard on the shows because it it leaves such little room for the imagination going forward um, and such such a little amount of fresh matches and and everything uh, in the future. You know what I mean? So I do think Impact was kind of treading water this year the more and more I think about it because most likely they're, they're, they wait for this season every year, who's getting released, and then uh, go from there, you know, because I think this is going to be a yearly thing with Slammiversary, who's going to show up. So I, I, I expect every year this time for the first like three, four months, them to just tread water with who they have. We're going to watch see a lot of the same matches. A lot of throwaway shows. And then hopefully it gets better from there. So let's talk Hardcore Justice. The presentation was what stood out to me first of all. Someone tweeted the other day, and I, and I agreed with them, that the, the red right now on the Impact Weekly show is very overwhelming. It's, it's all over the place. And you have to, uh, you know, when you were talking about in the ring, you know, the lights and every it, it's just red, red, red. And obviously, with there no being fan, with there not being any fans there, it's depressing. The the it's the set is depressing. It's lifeless. Um, they put on some some panels around the ring. I couldn't tell their LED panels or exactly what they were. Uh, just had some new graphics. Uh, it, it looked really fresh, and it just looked more professional. Maybe it was more of a, like a pay per view setup, but. It looked good, and I hope they kind of continue to do something like this going forward, even if it's not, you know, the pay-per-view is not on, or Impact Plus show, or whatever, you know? But it looked good. The fake crowd noise is starting to sound very natural to where it was very fake at first, you know what I mean? And um, I'm I'm happy with how it sounds. The show is not as lifeless as it was for a while. So, when I say people... We're just, this show was a miss. There seemed to be a lot of people kind of disappointed with the show. It was a decent wrestling show. It was a paint-by-numbers show during WrestleMania weekend. So, at first I said, okay, well, they're not trying to get any kind of buzz here. But then, uh, you know, TW made a point where, like, they know what they were going up against. So, it was kind of a throwaway show. I say it all the time. I don't think hardcore wrestling in this day and age has any... um, traction in the wrestling world. I don't think anybody cares. And I used to I used to really years ago, I couldn't stand the extreme rules paper pay-per-views for WWE because it was just a bunch of extreme rules matches. No one got busted up, you know. There no one was hurt. everyone showed up the next night on Raw. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm not really into that hardcore stuff because, you know, all these guys went through you you had a whole card of matches. They went through hell. Everyone showed up on the next episode. No one was bloody. No one was hurt. No one was, you know, a whole a whole show. No one, you know what I mean? No one uh, cut open. If I'm wrong, correct me, but I don't recall. I don't remember seeing anything like that. So this show, I think where people got disappointed was that it really dangled the carrot. We, and especially me, have been saying every Impact Plus show, I'm like, someone's showing up, dude. Someone's debuting, especially in like the knockout side. Someone's debuting. Someone's showing up. And with this show, there was all these like surprise opponents and surprise partners and this guy gets hurt and he's going to have a surprise replacement. I mean, talk about dangling the carrot in front of us and then just uh, <laughs> just giving us the same people from the, the roster that we see all the time. You know, it's, it's like the uh, Last Impact Plus show when they're like, there's going to be a historic six knockouts uh, or six woman... T- tag team match you know what I mean everyone's like oh my god you know here it is the time has come you know and and I was applauding the marketing where they're like you go to the website to get the information you know it's like oh my god what's what's going on here 
And then you go to the websites, the same, <laughs> the same chicks we see wrestle every week. I mean, it sounded so much cooler than it, what it was. So they definitely dangled that carrot uh, this episode. Um, it was almost a troll, not this episode, but this show. It was almost a troll job. The first time it happened, so Josh Alexander, TJP, Ace Austin, they're all asked to find a, a tag team partner. Um, if you ask me, these guys are getting their hands on each other way too much. You know, I don't know what they got left for the pay-per-view. Uh, it starts off, and you just know it's BS, because TJP is standing in the ring with Falaba. Ace the Austin, the X-Division champion, is standing in the ring with, with Madman Fulton. Jobber entrances. No entrance, no music, no nothing. They're already in the ring when the show starts. Josh Alexander comes down. The one and you always know in these cases, the one who gets the music played is gonna win. So Josh Alexander comes down with Petey Williams. Uh, Petey Williams was a nice little surprise. I mean, we haven't see, seen him in a little while, but he is he's one of those like break glass in case case of emergency type dudes. Like he's he is a a, a step above Tommy Dreamer and you know two steps above suicide. As far as you know, like oh who, who's uh, <laughs> We need somebody. We need a body. We need a warm body, warm-blooded wrestler. You know what I mean? Who we, who, who we got? Who brought their trunks with them to work today? So um, the match was cool overall. I enjoyed the actual match itself. Uh, Josh Josh and Petey get the win. We knew that was coming. Uh, Josh wrestled TJP again on the following episode. He won. So uh, considering Josh got a couple wins, most likely it means Ace Austin's going to win at the, uh, the pay-per-view. Um, what else I got about this? This uh, I would have just loved the next one-on-one X Division match. I don't know why TJP is in this match at a uh, Rebellion. He's lost twice to Ace Austin. He lost his title and lost the rematch. Uh, he's even lost to Josh Alexander, but uh, somehow he earned his way um, back into a title shot. Shira took on Hernandez in this chairly legal match. I don't know why we were supposed to care about this match. It wasn't that bad. Um, I thought for a couple big dudes, they, they worked outside of their comfort zone. But the match probably went on like four minutes longer than I needed it to. I was kind of ready for it to be done. Um, it, it went a little long. I was not in agreement with them breaking Shira from Rohit. Because what are you going to do with Shira now? What's he going to do? Cut baby face promos? You know, that role was perfect for him. There's no reason to cause dissension. I don't know why every time you team people up, there has to be dissension within the ranks, you know? But with that being said, Rohit did help him win after, you know, did did help him win. And after the match, it seemed like they kind of made up. So we'll see what the story is with these guys. Uh, Doc Gallows took on Black Taurus. I enjoyed this match because... um. I like Black. I like Black Taurus a lot. He gets a, he can work with anybody. The only thing about this match is that you know Doc Gallows is going to win, right? Uh, Carl Anderson took on Crazy Steve the other day, beat him, and it's not that I want like fifty fifty booking or anything like that necessarily. Like one of them, one from one team wins and one from the other team wins, but they both win. That's the fact of the matter. And now these guys are fighting next week on Impact. Are we supposed to believe that Decay has any chance of winning this match? Every time the Good Brothers is on Impact Television, there's we never feel like they're going to lose. You know, they don't. They never do. They haven't been pinned yet, right? I think maybe uh, Carl Anderson got pinned in a singles match or something like that. But we don't feel at any point that these guys are going to win, or whoever their opponents are. We don't feel like they're going to win. We knew Black Taurus was going to win this match. So, um, you know, the Good Brothers stuff is is just not interesting. Unfortunately, um, until they either find them opponents or treat their opponents like they have a shot in hell of, of winning. You know, we talk about the shallowness of the knockout division. Like, whew, that's really nothing compared to the, the state of the tag team division right now. Nobody's hot. Nobody has momentum. And how, how could you possibly? At one point during this show, they showed us a full-length RVD match. Um... He was in, inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. You know, um, you know how Impact operates. How can we piggyback off of this? I don't know why any of us watching the Impact Plus show would care. 
you know, I don't know what the the overall goal is with that. Um, I had no interest in this match, like zero. Uh, he took on Sabu, I think. I was trying my hardest to fast forward through this. It's easy to fast forward on Impact Plus on your phone, but on the TV, it is not. Or at least with Roku. Um, they don't really have much of a fast forward feature. You just have to keep tapping the button. Huge pain in the ass. Uh, I, w- I mean, full length fucking match. Did anybody care about this? Um, even though sh- this show was kind of hit or miss, I'm never going to say like, oh, there was a bad match. Because I can't wrestle. You know what I mean? Uh, but there was a bad match. Matt Cardona versus Johnny Swinger. This was a Crate American Bash. The reason I thought it was a bad match because it was actually painful how much offense Swinger got in on, on, in this match on Cardona. Um, I mean, an insane amount of offense. And every time Cardona got anything going, it was two or three moves, and then Swinger took advantage again. You know what I mean? It was just uh, no mo- he, he couldn't get anything going. They were taking way too long to open the boxes. Uh, I, I thought the gimmick was silly. I mean, hardcore wrestling in 2021 is just silly. It just, you know, the stop signs and the wet floor signs and the baking pans and the mystery crates. You know, this it's all a joke. I was actually kind of disappointed at the end when Cardona opened the box and he had something in there. I thought they were going to do something creative, like he got some kind of... Uh, title match contract or uh, just something interesting. You know what I mean? Um, and that's not what they did. We'll, t- we'll talk about that here again in a little bit. But this match did zero for me. Uh, I do find Swinger funny. I, d- I used to not, like, I couldn't stand this guy at one point. I felt like they were just forcing him into um, segments because he was cracking up the boys or he was cracking up Scott and Don, you know? Um, and, and they just kept putting him in everything, even when he didn't fit. But now I'm starting to find a lot more humor in him. So this was another one dangling the carrot. Uh, Sammy Callahan put out an open challenge. Surely we're going to get someone new here, right? Maybe an up-and-comer? No, Sam Beal. Who? Sam Beal. A student of Trey Miguel. Now, if if this dude came out and they were, you know, he had this, like, amazing showing versus Sammy Callahan, there would be, you'd have something to work with. But it was a glorified squash. Um, it's kind of like when they did the moose angle where he was taken on the security guard. Like that was an amazing story they could have told and built that into something. And, and, uh, really, I mean, could have told an incredible story, like really like a modern day one, two, three kid for impact. If you're familiar with what I'm talking about, they really could have done something with that. We haven't seen that dude since. Um, and then Sam Beal, I mean, we'll probably never see him again. Uh, he didn't really come off like a star, but I mean, who does when they're that are young, you know, starting an in industry? But this was just a squash for no effing reason. Um, it's it's clear that this is just not a company that cares about like the young talent like that. I mean, yeah, they bring in the Chris Bays and the Ace Austins and and Trey Miguel's, and they got dude like dudes like that. Don't get me wrong, but this is not a a, a company that's like actively scouting for, um you know, the independent scene for, and maybe they are, but it doesn't appear that way. Scouting the independent scene, like who's, who's this like hot up and comer that no one, uh, maybe no one's heard of yet. You know, like Rohit Raju is a pretty good example. Like I was familiar with him, but like, you know, he wasn't like super hot on the indies. You know what I mean? He's making these great matches and they were able to turn him into something. So they, they're clearly, that's not a priority. Like their, their priority is the, you know, what, what mid carters are, uh, release from WWE that we can say we signed, but they're not really on a contract, you know, and then like six months later, we'll see what happens. That's, that's just what they do. You know, we, we got to come to terms with that. The, the up and the young, fresh up and comers, just not what they're in the market for. Jake, something took on Brian Myers. Uh, we're going 50, 50 here because uh, on the last episode of impact, Jake, something was the surprise opponent. Um, you know, they did pick your poison, you know, again, it's surprise opponents, it's guys from the roster, which typically that's the way those matches work, but it's, they've really just watered down the mystery, the surprise thing to where it means absolutely nothing at this point. Uh, at rebellion, there's going to be a surprise partner for Jordan Grace. I have to believe that's someone new. <laughs> I would, I will stop watching if it's, uh, like Rosemary or something who, 
I mean, I love Rosemary, but if it, if it is someone from the effing roster, I will lose my shit. I, I swear to God. But anyway, I kind of enjoyed this match. Uh, it kind of took me back to my childhood of Jake the Snake versus Rick the Model Martel blindfold match, which wasn't even the first blindfold match in WWE. The first one was Rick Martel versus Coco Beware. Uh, Rick Martel attacked him before the match while Coco had the blindfold on and he didn't have his on and then he just put it on for the finish. <laughs> so it was kind of funny, but it just, it took me back to uh, those memories a little bit. You know, clearly they can see each other, but uh, it, it was two guys that I like and support and want to see get real momentum. That's why I don't really like seeing, you know, 50-50 booking with these dudes. I don't really know why they fought each other. I thought the the backstage segment with Dreamer was funny. It was like, it's a blindfold match with, with weapons, you know? It was a creative match to, to do, you know? Um, again, a little bit silly, but I was I was more, I enjoyed this one a little bit more uh, than some of the other stuff on the show. And then uh, Jake something uh, gets the win. That's when uh, Cardona comes and the crate is full of toys and just, uh, again, d- just dangled carrot. Um, Tennille Dashwood takes on Rosemary, Jordan Grace, Alicia Edwards, Havoc, and Sue Young, number one's contenders match. This is another spot where people are like, dude, someone's going to show up. Because they're surely not going to have Deanna wrestle at the pay-per-view against someone from the effing roster again. Like, no way, right? No effing way. Uh, I think if Jordan won this match, the people would have revolted if we had to watch them again. Granted, they put on amazing matches, but it's like the same crap over and over, right? Um, Sue Young came, you know, appears in this match. I thought that was really well done. I liked when they did it with Susie, and I liked it with Susan, too. It looked very natural. This one was, like, it was more natural than the Susie one looked. And it, it looked like it was still the same actress. Or a- actress. Like, it, was this, it wasn't an actress. It was literally looked like Sue was still there as Susan. So that was really, really well done. Um, the thing is, like, Sue Young, is she, does, so does she appear for the pay-per-views or what? Like, it's so, there's no rhyme or reason. I'd hate to be in the creative room trying to figure out, how do we... What's our justification for bringing Sue Young back? How do we how do we do that? Since clearly, like Father James Mitchell's the one that create turned her into Susan, but somehow she can just turn back to Sue Young when she wants. There's just like no rhyme or reason. It just happens. But I I like when I see her because I like her a lot. I like all her characters. This match was good. Um, I thought the women worked really really hard in this match. You know, the only thing I would have really changed was just the fuck finish at the end where. Uh, have it got blinded and then my son just heard me say fuck finish and uh yelled at me i yelled i said a bad word from the other room i do have a swear jar here that <laughs> that's why they remind me but anyway uh havoc was blinded jordan goes for the pin caleb pulls her out you know super kicks her which i, which I thought was cool and then tenille rolls in and wins so here here's my issue with that like if tenille is your your opponent for the pay-per-view like have her have her had some momentum behind her like just have her win the match don't don't do the silly finish you know to where Nevaeh comes and costs her the match just just have Tenille win have Tenille beat these other women and then you have something to work with with the knockouts feud but most likely this is going to be a triple threat uh Taylor Wilde's probably going to get inserted or um or something like that I would be shocked if this is a heel versus heel match one on one at the pay per view, I, I would be shocked. They are doing a lot of stuff lately that you can see f- coming from miles away, and I think this is one of them. I'd be flabbergasted if if that's the match we got at the pay per view. But if that is the match, then why is Tanil getting a BS win? Like, give her some freaking momentum. Give someone some momentum around here. But I like the match. Um, Deanna took on Jazz, title match. You know, this was another one where I was like, someone's going to step forth and challenge her after the match. I understand it wasn't a triple, you know, the triple threat was a number one contender match, but I was like, dude, someone's stepping forward at this show. Um, of course not. But uh, Deanna won as we expected her to. It was probably Jazz's best match in Impact. You know, and she did some good work in the uh, in the short time there. Um you know, they, they like to bring these, uh, pretty much anyone Impact brings in at this point is like, 
pretty close to retirement. You know, that's, that's the, um, that's the odd thing here. So I don't know if Ken Shamrock is, you know, they just wrote him off TV with a suspension or whatever, but it's like that dude is, uh, you know, minutes away from retirement. Um, just some of these guys, they bring in Scott Steiner, you know, they're just at the end of the end of the road, you know? Um, but jazz had a nice little, nice little run here. Probably had one too many title matches than we really needed to see. Uh, this it would have been cooler if she just this was her her lone title match because I I do think she got one earlier right that uh, Deanna rolled her up or some crap like that. This this should have just been her lone title match. It would have meant a little bit more, um, you know. But emotional moment uh, for Jazz retiring. And then the main event was Violent by Design versus Rich Swan, Willie Mack, Eddie Edwards, and Trey Miguel. So this is another one I keep saying dangling the carrot right. Uh, they take, you know, Tommy Dreamer was taken out before the match. Uh, Dr. Ross in a lab coat, uh, comes and rules him out of the match. No, you know, no check or nothing like that. Uh, you know, no examination, just like this, Hey, this man cannot move on. You know, we have matches where guys, uh, take a, a lot of punishment and refs don't call the match. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this guy probably got, you know, hit in the back of the head, fell down. I was like, Oh, he, he cannot compete. So it's just shocking to me that they did this to Dreamer. I would have think they would have done it to Mac, but you know, surprise tag, surprise opponent or a surprise partner at the end. It's Trey Miguel, none other, none other than Trey, right? Uh, is this like the third time he's been a surprise uh, partner since he's returned to Impact? You know, it, it means nothing at this point. Uh, you might as well just do an angle backstage where you approach Trey and be like, hey, can you replace him? Because, again, people are thinking someone's going to debut, someone's going to show up. We're getting a version of this at Rebellion uh, to where Swan, and not Swan, but Mac and Eddie are in the match. And then, um, you know, we don't know, Violent by Design, it, it, there's going to be a change to that match. We know that. But the only thing that I would have changed with this was that I thought the rules were really cool. I would have liked to know what they were ahead of time. Maybe they told us, but I don't recall. But I thought they were really cool. And when they came down, it was like Gauntlet style. I would have liked to see him come down with a weapon of choice. That would have been cool to me. I'm glad Violent by Design won because I thought they were heading to OVE territory and they're, they got a little steam behind them, so I can dig it. Um, but that's it for Hardcore Justice and my thoughts on it. Uh, leave all your thoughts in the comments if you're uh, listening here on YouTube. I will talk to you guys soon. Peace.
All right, check, check. Let's see how this sounds. One time, one time. Check, check. You know what I mean? Um, so that's what I, you know, my overall thoughts on it.